Hey guys, happy Monday. Hope everybody is doing well out there today. Uh, today, I thought we'd kind of go back to normal. Last week, we spent quite a bit of time talking about Turing Pi and that sort of thing. And this week, I want to kind of go back and take a look at some more Docker containers, that sort of thing. And I thought we would start things off by taking a look at a Docker container called SmokePing. Now, SmokePing is a Dockerized container that allows you to monitor your network latency uh, by pinging different sites literally around the world uh, on a fairly regular basis to find out what their ping time is, to see how the internet connection is doing uh, on your in your area, but also to see if maybe there's something going on uh, on a distant server, uh, that sort of thing. So uh, let's jump over to my desktop and take a quick look at how to get Smoke Ping installed. So if we take a look here, we're on uh, hub.docker.com, we're on Linux servers, Smoke Ping. And if we scroll down a little bit, like I said, it keeps track of your uh, network latency. There's an example, but the example they've got uh, from uh, UC Davis is actually kind of old. Um, so not really terribly helpful there. Um, luckily, this is fairly easy to install. Uh, it should be compatible with desktop processors, uh, Raspberry Pis, ARM processors, that sort of thing. So you shouldn't have any problem installing this basically on any device you've got. Uh, if we scroll down, uh, there's a Docker uh, command that we can run here if you wanted to do it that way. Uh, but we're gonna take a look at this Docker compose file right here. Um, and if we come over, we can see that I've already got this in uh, my portainer and I've already made the necessary adjustments to this stack uh, to get it deployed on my server. Uh, so if we start at the top, we can see that we're using a version 2.1. Uh, we're using smoke ping, but from Linux server, container name is smoke ping, PUID, PGID, and time zone are already set. Of course, you'll want to adjust those to fit, uh, to fit your setup. Uh, below that, we've got a couple of volumes. Uh, one is for the configuration and one is for the data to be stored. Uh, you will need both of those in order to make this work. And then we've got uh, port 89. This originally was on port 80, um, but I've got a bunch of other stuff running and, and I've got port 80 taken up. So, uh, so I switched it to 89 and then we'll restart unless stopped. Uh, pretty standard stuff here. And of course, uh, once you've got all of that updated uh, the way you need it, you can just click on the uh, deploy stack button down here. In my case, it says update the stack. Yours will probably say deploy the stack. So go ahead and click that, give it a few minutes, and then we can come over and take a look at the logs here. And uh, here we can see uh, everything that it went through. And uh, once you get to this services.d in, uh, in your logs, should be good to go. So then you jump over here to your server's IP uh, and then the port number, of course, and it'll forward over here to smoke ping automatically. Um, and from here, you'll uh, be able to see some different charts, that sort of thing. Now, the thing to keep in mind about this uh, is it will take several minutes for these uh, charts to start actually populating with any data. Uh, originally, they will just be empty charts. There'll be nothing there. Um, and you just gotta kind of wait for it to do its thing in the background. Uh, here you can see, uh, it looks like that these are going to ping about every five minutes. Um, and here you can see we've got, uh, by default, just the most interesting destinations. Uh, we've got Europe, uh, looks like for all of these, uh, looks like we've got USA here, Switzerland, CERN, uh, all kinds of stuff going on here. And what's cool is uh, you can actually come in here and open these up and actually be real granular about the data that you want to look at and, and see uh, what your ping times look there. And of course, the, the lower you get on a ping, the better. Uh, you know, this is uh, from CERN. So this is in Switzerland. Uh, we're getting about 150 uh, milliseconds there. Um, so not too bad, all things considered. I'm sure they've got a lot of people pinging them constantly. So um, so this way we can kind of keep an idea, an idea of what's going on there. And of course, you can always jump back out. You know, if you've, if you've really zoomed in there, just click generate, it'll take you back uh, and you can take another look at that full size chart. Uh, but we do have some kind of interesting things in here. Uh, we can look at um, uh, data lost, uh, uh, max ping times, that sort of thing. Uh, we can actually come in here and look at different sites that are set up, oops, by default. Uh, we've got Facebook, YouTube, Jupyter Broadcasting, Google and Linux server.io. Uh, I thought it was kind of cool that Linux server put in their own uh, their own server to ping there. Uh, and of course, you can also see here that Facebook, I'm getting 11 or 12, YouTube about 11 or 12, Jupyter Broadcasting about 45, uh, Google about 10 to 12 there. The Linux server, I'm getting a little over 100. Uh, and you can always double check these numbers if you wanted to, uh, just by going to CMD, 
Uh, so if we bring this up, we can say ping uh, Linux server io space dash t. And here you can see I'm getting about 125-ish milliseconds on average for my ping times here, um, which we'll go ahead and just cancel that. And that's about what I'm getting here. So let's go ahead and zoom in on this. Oops, like so. And we'll just kind of zoom in on this area. And here you can see we're getting about 125 milliseconds there. Uh, you can also jump over to Europe, take a look at you know Germany. Uh, looks like I'm getting about 120, 125 maybe 140 there. Uh, you know, we can really zoom in on this area here. Looks like about 135. So uh, this is just kind of a cool way to keep tabs on your internet connection latency speed for different servers around the world. Very easy to set up, really only took a couple of minutes. And of course, the hardest part is just the waiting to start receiving data from uh, all of these different pings to find out what your latency looks like around the world. So a pretty simple Docker uh, container to go back to after a week of uh, doing Turing Pi. Uh, but I thought we should jump in with something easy, something that's very useful, I think. Um, so if you enjoyed this video, do me a favor, give the video a thumbs up. Would really Help me out a bunch. Uh, also, if you're interested in uh, Docker containers and that sort of thing, uh, you might want to get subscribed. I've got more Docker containers and more Docker uh, content coming here very soon. Um, I will have a link to this in the description down below. And of course, there are a couple of different ways in there you can uh, help support the channel, whether it's through coffee or Patreon. Uh, but I think with all that being said, I'm going to go ahead and wrap things up here. As always, thanks for your time. I always appreciate your support, and I'll talk to you in the next video.